Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining this week's podcast with Reverend Dechi Olabode, a man called to activate and actualize God's royalty in humanity. He's the senior pastor of the Enthronement Assembly, a network of churches with headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria. Be blessed as you listen to Reverend Dechi Olabode. In Psalms 110, verse 1 and 2, verse 12, the Bible said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength, the rod of your strength, brother, out of Zion, saying, Rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. So today we're considering a fresh subject as we build on this. But we established that people just don't rule. There is what it takes to rule. I remember sharing with you from Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 12 to verse 14, that the fire had gone out of a rod of a certain person's branch and it devoured the fruit so that she has no strong rod, she has no strong rod to be the scepter to rule. Ezekiel chapter 19, verse 16. She has no strong rod to be a scepter to rule. What that means, therefore, is that it takes scepters to rule. But it is rods that we convert to scepters for our dominion and our leadership. What are scepters? Scepter, of course, rods there, of course, the word of God. Hallelujah. God said to Moses, take this rod with which you will do signs. Please give them the scripture in Exodus. Take this rod with which you will do signs. Of course, at the end of that, he manifested his authority over Egypt, his authority over Pharaoh. And I prophesied at this year, by the power of mercy, grace and God, Grace of God, you will manifest dominion in the name of the Lord Jesus. But what you can manifest is a function of the authority, the, 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 the rods, the scepters that are at work in your life. We dealt with the scepter of praise. And I think it's something you need to go back and activate. But today, I want to add one more scepter to it, which we'll find from Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 15 to verse 16. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15 to verse 16, a statement was made in scripture. He said, By me, kings reign, and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, and all the judges of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, when you look at that scripture, what the Bible is saying is this particular thing is about to share with you is what kings use to reign. Kings reign by it. Rulers decree justice by it. Princes rule by it. The nobles also administrate their affairs by it. And all the judges of the earth administer judgment by it. You may be wondering what that is. What is it that kings reign by? What is it that rulers decree justice by? What is it that princes, what is that the princes rule by? What is it that nobles administrate justice by? And what is it that the judges of the earth administrate their judgment by? To answer that question, You'd have to go back to the Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 1, where he was coming from. By me, suggests that he was coming from somewhere. And we're going to do a verse by verse study of Proverbs chapter 8 to unearth what this writer is trying to talk about. My Bible calls it the excellence of wisdom. It begins with saying, Does not wisdom cry out? And understanding lift up her voice. 
he says she takes her stand on the top of the high hill. He says, does not wisdom cry out, understand and lift up a voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hills, besides the way, where the paths meet. She cries out. I'm going to come back and teach on business here someday. She cries out by the gates, and at the entrance of the city, and at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, as wisdom is calling, and my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips will be, will, will come, and, and uh, from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth speaks truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness, as wisdom speaking, and nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who has understanding and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction, wisdom is speaking, and not silver. Our knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that one may desire cannot be compared to her. So, he's placing wisdom above silver. He's placing wisdom above gold, choice gold. He's placing wisdom above rubies. And it's saying here that all the things that you can ever desire in life cannot be compared with her. This really tells me, therefore, that it is a manifestation of foolishness to place any other desire above wisdom. All the things, oh, I want to be rich, oh, I want to get married, oh, I want... All the things that you can desire in this life is nothing to be compared to her. And that's why Proverbs 4, 7 says, this wisdom is the principal thing. And therefore, get, under, get, get it, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Sincerely, I think our lives will change if we begin to give wisdom its place. I feel that many people are struggling right now because wisdom does not have its place in their lives. Wisdom does not have its, its place in their lives. All the things that you can... So nothing else should be allowed to usurp that order. Wisdom should be the principal thing. But let's, let's run. He now says, I, wisdom. So again, you're seeing it was wisdom that was talking. I, wisdom, was wisdom that was talking. Dwell with prudence to find out knowledge of discretion and discussion, King James says, I wisdom dwell with knowledge to find out knowledge of witty inventions. That's verse 12 of that scripture. I wisdom dwell with prudence to find out knowledge of witty inventions. And then in Ephesians 1 verse 6, you can give him the scripture of greed. He says that wisdom, God, Jesus Christ has abounded to us in Christ. He has abounded to us in all wisdom. And and knowledge and wisdom, I wisdom dwell with prudence to find out um manner no, no, with inventions. But let's press on. The fear of the Lord, therefore, is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. Wisdom is speaking. He says, Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. He says, I am understanding and I have strength. Hallelujah. Then he now says, by me. Remember he says, I wisdom. He now says, by me, kings reign. Rulers decree justice. Princes rule. The nobles also. All the judges of the earth. 
It means, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that wisdom is an, another scepter. Please stay with me. Wisdom is another scepter. Wisdom is another scepter. Now, <laughs> let's press on. This wisdom now says, I love those who love me. Someone say, I love everybody. Yes. That's one level. Wisdom said, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently, not casually, diligently will find me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. Ah, that's so powerful. That really blessed me. That is, he's saying to find wisdom, you, you're going to have to engage in a diligent search. Diligent search. Diligent search. Those who seek me diligently will find me. I cannot be cheaply found. It takes a diligent search. That also means, let me talk about you. Also, as you begin to grow in value, for somebody to access you, they should search diligently. Don't be cheap. Stop being cheap. Stop being cheap. Recently, they told me about someone living from I said, for what? I mean, before you start getting to that level, I mean, you, you, you want to see the diligence. Even God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You, you just went for a party, somebody gave you a number, you are there. You're already in their bed. That's why you're where you are. Don't you know that the value that people place on things is a function of the diligence and the effort that they applied in order to get it? One phone chat, you're already having sex. That's why you're cheap. Are you getting what I'm saying? The wisdom is saying, you say, you say, it is a, wisdom is saying, it should take, it should take a diligent search for you to be found. Not just that you're found on the road. Nothing valuable is found on the streets. Nothing valuable. Just everywhere, jumping everywhere. For instance, if, if you study me and all that, you don't see me everywhere. Wherever you see me relates to my work. I'm not that kind of person who jumps everywhere. No, for how? For what? You see, you see wisdom. Those who seek me diligently, if I'm, may that be this year, where this year you're going to place value on yourself in the name of the Lord Jesus. Where it will take serious, a serious search. And I'm talking to ladies here. Many ladies are single today because they came too cheap. But the way it works. Let me tell you about men. Men don't value whatever comes cheap. They trash it. Are you living? They, what are they? They trash it. But that's not relationship. So, those who seek me diligently will find me. Don't be cheap. He said, riches and honor are with me. This is wisdom speaking. You want to be rich? It's with me. You, you want honor? It's with me. <laughs> Look at what wisdom is saying. And then he said, not just you are rich today. Enduring riches and righteousness. Enduring riches. So you can be rich till I die. <laughs> I heard some guy had a song like that about being rich till he dies. I say amen. I hope he's on the path of wisdom. <laughs> right? Enduring riches and righteousness. And that also tells me you can be rich and righteous. You can be rich and clean. You can be rich and pure. You can be rich and holy. You can be rich and righteous. Enduring riches and righteousness. And you see... When you're walking also in the path of wisdom, your riches, are you there? Your, the product also will be riches and righteousness. And that's very important because riches can destroy. The Bible says the prosperity of fools is their destruction. Hallelujah. He said, my fruit is better than gold. This is wisdom boasting. My fruit is better, where am I? My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than the finest of gold or fine gold. And he said, my revenue, the revenue of wisdom is better than choice silver. He said, I traverse the way of righteousness. And I'm in the midst of, of the path of justice. 
so that I will cause those that love me to inherit wealth. And that's where people miss it. They love wealth. No. If you don't, you see, if you love wealth, you're going to have issues. You should love wisdom. He said, they that love me will inherit wealth. Let's press on. Of course, because of their love for me, I'm going to fill their treasures. Hallelujah. Now, wisdom now started making some very bold statements. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way. That is God had to apprehend wisdom at the beginning. What do you want to start? You need wisdom. If God needed wisdom to start, you need wisdom to start. I remember when I came to this city to plant this church, I prayed for wisdom like a madman. Wisdom was my daily prayer point because I knew this scripture was an inspiration. I said, the Lord, po- I, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of my way. At the beginning. Which means whatever you want to begin, it is wisdom that you should begin it with. And it says, the Lord possessed me in a good way before the works of old. He says, I have been established even from everlasting. Woo! He's saying I'm as old as eternity. He said, from the beginning, even before there was ever an earth. So wisdom, write this down, pre-existed our civilization. Wisdom pre-existed the earth. Even ever before there was an earth. He said, when there were no depths, Hey, I was brought forth. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. He said, when there was no fountain abounding with water, he's saying, before Genesis 1, I was in existence. That's what he's saying. Because Genesis 1, Genesis, you see water. No, he said, even before there was an earth, before there was a fountain of water, abounding water, he said, before even the mountains were settled. Ha he said, before the hills were, were before, before the hills, I was brought forth. He said, while as yet he had not made the earth or even the fields or the primal dust of the world. Wisdom is God's principal, the his principal creation. Wisdom was what he possessed before he, he had anything else. That's why many times when I look at a person, if I see a person's wisdom, I don't worry about their future. I've gone to a point now where I'm very sensitive to wisdom and foolishness. If I see a person's wisdom, I don't worry about their future. If I see a person's foolishness, I'm concerned about their future. But if you they do the moon like you they move like this, <laughs> you should say you get future so while I was yet well, okay, while as yet he had not made the earth and the fields or the primal dust, he said when he prepared the heavens. I was there. Wisdom is speaking. When he drew a circle in the face of the deep, when he established the clouds, not when he separated it all, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters would not transgress his commands. He says, so that the waters would not transgress his command. He said, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was besides him, write this down, my Bible said, as a master craftsman. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> One day my pastor said to me, who is teaching you all these things? <laughs> May you get to that level where your wisdom will wow me. Where your wisdom wows me. You know, when the person who gave birth to you in the spirit saying, who is teaching you all these things? Who? He's saying, I'm seeing you manifest certain things that are not a product of my teaching. Certain realms of wisdom that are not a product of my teaching. May I be instructed by your wisdom. That is, you can be so wise that even, I've not read that, that your understanding should not be limited to the understanding of your teachers. I have more understanding than your teachers, my teachers, because my precepts are your meditation. You know, in as much as you see people and say, ah, why is it foolish? You know, you are not there yet. When you are there, even your teachers will receive education from your wisdom as they observe your operations. 
You observe your actions as they become beneficiaries of your wisdom. Ah! You see this guy. Are you getting what I'm saying? At another time, my father said to another person, he said, relate to him. He's a wise man. Relate to him. He's a wise man. I can't say that of everybody. When a father recommends and says, relate to somebody, relate to this person. He's safe to relate to. He's a wise man. Come on, see something. I was besides him as a... You see, this year, let wisdom be beside you as a master craftsman. I was beside him as a master craftsman. Then this thing blessed me. He said, I was daily his delight. Because my time is running. I, this year, daily delight in wisdom. I daily interact with wisdom. Daily go for wisdom. I was his daily, not his weekly delight. Not his Sunday, Sunday delight. You need to put an infrastructure in place where you can interact daily, daily with wisdom. Daily. Daily. Because this year, we're going to do so many massive things. You need a, he said, I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in his inhabited world. And he said, my delight was with the sons of men. Now, therefore, he said, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who keep my ways. He's saying, when you're keeping the ways of wisdom, you're blessed. Hear instruction and be wise. Don't disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to wisdom. To me, see again, watching daily at my gates. That's what I'm doing. 12 midnight to 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. or so. I'm watching at the gates of wisdom. <laughs> Those who follow me on you version, watching daily at his wisdom. Watching daily. I was daily his life. This blessed me. I was daily his life. I was watching daily, 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 not weekly. Daily. Munching this, munching that. We see, we teach less than we know. We only teach what the time permits us. <laughs> we teach less than we know. We even teach less than we use. I was daily his delight. Blessed man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Why? Because whoever finds me has found life. Whoever finds me has found life. And whoever finds me obtains favor from the law. You want to grow in favor? Find wisdom. You want to grow in favor? Ah, Pastor B said some reason that blessed me. He said, if your boss does not trust you, you're a fool. I should give shares the message of you. That's the truth. If you fall out of trust with your boss, he said, you're a fool. Because the real deal is trust. Once you're out of trust, sincerely, God will help you. I was daily his delight. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But the one who sins against wisdom wrongs his own soul. And everyone who hates wisdom loves death. Oh! Everyone who hates wisdom loves, loves death. So to hate wisdom is to love death. To wrong wisdom is to war against your soul. So we are now encouraging to us for, therefore, we yeah, get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget her. Not turn away from the words of my mouth. Don't forsake her. She will preserve you. Wisdom preserves. Love her. And she will keep you. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt wisdom and she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. So place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you. So wisdom is what promotes. Wisdom is what brings honor. Wisdom is what empowers you with grace. Wisdom is what gives you a crown of glory. 
This wisdom we're talking about is why Mike Mudok matters to us because if we are to activate and apply God's royalty, which is the mandate of his ministry, then wisdom is a core issue. Wisdom is a key issue. And by the message, we are going to devote the whole month to this this year. It's a key issue. You can't reign without a crown of glory. Wisdom will deliver to you. Wives, a crown of glory. Husbands, a crown of professionals, a crown of glory. Business people, a crown of glory. But wisdom deliver to you. Now, having said that, we must clarify the identity of wisdom because wisdom, very quickly, is not some things we think it is. Wisdom is not being smart. It's not, I'm, you guys smart. It's not being sharp. Wisdom is not being street smart. There's nothing wrong with being street smart, provided you don't go into sin, but that's not wisdom. Wisdom is not being street smart. Wisdom is not intelligence. Wisdom is not academic brilliance. Wisdom is not articulation or eloquence. In fact, in James chapter 3, verse 13, it's something some here. He said, Who is wise and understand about James 3 13? Who is wise and understand among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. So that's what Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. He said, but if you have bitterness, envy, self-seeking in your heart, don't boast or lie against the truth. Let me explain what I mean by that. Sometimes there are people who, you know, I, people, I, sometimes I joke. Sometimes I can confront maybe a staff or somebody, then I see evasion. They evade it. I laugh. You see, your progress is a function of how you integrate truth, not how you evade it. So there are a lot of people, you say like that, they evade, evade it, evade it, evade it. Truth has a work. It was accomplished in my life and in your life by its integration. There are a lot of people, once you point the truth at them, they evade it. They evade it. It's, it's just a statement. They will never agree. You see them on one spot. This year, integrate truth. Don't evade it. Integrate truth. Don't evade it. It's your life we're talking about. It has a work it's supposed to do. It could be your wife that confronts you. It could be your husband. It could be a friend. It could be anything. It could be life. It could be the world. Don't evade it. Integrate it. Don't explain away. Don't lie against the truth. You will make progress. The fact that you can explain away things does not mean you've gotten away with it. I'm telling you the truth. That's why it does. You will, can explain away anything. It's because of this. Go away. Stop lying against the truth. It's what affects you. He now said, this wisdom does not descend from above. Please underline that online, please. The wisdom we are talking about descends. I will repeat that like 10 times. This wisdom descends. This wisdom descends. This wisdom descends. This wisdom descends from somewhere. This wisdom is a descending wisdom. It's not a wisdom you can find on this terra firma. It's a wisdom that descends. This wisdom does not descend from above. So when we're talking about wisdom, wisdom descends from above. It's not what your friend is saying. Well, no, 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 no. Wisdom descends. It's not what your it descends from. You may read all the books. Wisdom descends. It descends from above. From above. From above. Underline it clearly from your line. This wisdom does not descend. Which means original wisdom descends from above. But the wisdom that does not descend is what? Earthly. So there's earthly wisdom. Sensual, so there's sensual wisdom. Demonic, so there's demonic. You know, sometimes you look at somebody dressed up, like, you can tell where their confidence is. Somebody dressing now, projecting this, projecting that. If that's where your confidence is, that's why you're not getting help. Your confidence is in your beauty. <laughs> you don't need the help of God. Yeah. You see, one of them, you see, one of the marks of brokenness is that you have given up on human ways of getting things done. You've given up on politics. You've given up on seduction. You've given up on all those kind of things. You've given up on manipulation. You have let go and let go. A broken person has let go. 
and let go. A broken person is not scheming. Listen to me. There's nothing in my life that I was scheming to get. There's no scheming. It's God doing everything. I can't touch anything. We hit some weeks now. You are 13 million as bills. Nothing, nothing. All of them are cleared. Nothing waits at the end of the week. God clears everything. I can't take the glory for that. So it's not about scheming. Businessmen, stop scheming. Stop cheating. Stop those kind of things. God can bless you. But when he sees that you are too, he will leave you. Ah, what do you do somebody you want to help that is proving that they know? You leave them. I have never been able to understand why people who did not exercise the option of followership will be claiming that they left, somebody left them. If they say your leader, you need following him, and that's he left you. Oh, he should come back and be following you. He should progress because of you. So let's see something here. Wisdom, this wisdom descends. We're not now talking about earthly wisdom. We're not talking about psychology. We're not talking about earthly wisdom. We're not talking about sensual wisdom. Neither are we talking about demonic wisdom. Because there are earthly, there's earthly wisdom. There's an earthly way to do marriage. There's an earthly way to do business. There's an earthly way to do all those things. There's an earthly way to do finance. There's an earthly way to do many. There's an earthly way to do things. Scheming, doing this. Do, there's an earthly way to get things done. That's not what I'm it doesn't work. There's a sensual way to get things done. That's not what we're talking about. There's a demonic way to get things done. So there's earthly wisdom. There's demonic wisdom. There's sensual wisdom. That's not what we're talking about. Sleep with him. He'll marry you. Has he married you? You slept. You slept. You talked about Talk about the marry you. At some point, you should give up on that way. You see, brokenness means you have given up on fleshly ways of accomplishing the plan and purpose of God or the resource of God that you desire for your life. It's that for where there's envy, self, self-seeking, confusion, every evil thing is there. It's about the wisdom we're talking about is from above. I'm saying this is a descending wisdom. <laughs> That's why you, sometimes if you see me waiting, I'm not cutting it yet. Those who know me, I am slow in decision but fast in execution. Not that I'm slow in decision, I'm a decision animal, but it must be what he's saying. <laughs> but once I pick what he's saying, get out of my way. And boom, 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 boom. Ruthless in execution. This wisdom is above. How do you know it? It is first pure. Then it is peaceable. It is gentle. It is willing to yield. It is full of mercy. And of good results or good fruits. It's without partiality. It's without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. Of them that make you so when we're talking wisdom we're not talking about sharpness smartness all those kind of things i'm beginning to lose a lot of respect for people like that in my space a lot of respect i just mark one of them i see them the other woman out says no no good that <laughs> money so it's not brilliant and intelligence and eloquence no articulation is not mm, academic degrees <laughs> it's not those things it's, 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 it, it, it descends. And I pray that this year you operate under the descending wisdom of God. <laughs> Those who walk around just know, I come and say, okay, to, 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 change it like this. It's a wisdom that descends. And that anybody who's around me must be ready for change. Because they can't be instructed and you are not moving. I'll move you. If they're instructing to move things and you're not moving, I'll move you. <laughs> you can go today. It's not anything. Because the security of women lies in their compliance with their maker. Nobody can be, nobody can fossilize, you know. I'll move you. It was, they moved the cloud, that was their security. That's why they arrived. So, ooh, what then is wisdom? We said it's not this, so what is it? A few scriptures. Number one, the fear of God is wisdom. Job chapter 28, verse 28, 17, he said, he, then he saw wisdom and declared, because you can read this from, in Job 28, you're saying, where is, where can we find wisdom? Where? The fact that there, where? 
at the fire. I can't go from beginning. He said, yeah. Then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it and indeed he searched it out. And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Aha. Uh -huh. So instantly we can tell. Are you embracing evil? Or are you, do you have a decision of departure from evil? The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Let me throw this out. My time is really fast. Thing. If you don't fear God, you are not wise. <laughs> Let me tell you, if God catch you, if God catches you, you go know. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. The same thing was repeated in Psalms 1110, 111 verse 10, Proverbs 1 7, Proverbs 9 10, Proverbs 15 20, 33. I think I'll read 15.33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs 9, 10, is the beginning of wisdom. What that tells you is that if you don't fear God, you have not even registered, you have not started. That's the same. It's the beginning. So if you're not walking and growing in the fear of God, you've not even registered in school yet. Because it's like saying the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So, if you don't even walk in the fear of God, you're not living in the consciousness of God, you don't fear God's judgmental prerogative, you have not even registered in the school of wisdom yet. We're saying, you have not even registered yet. You don't fear him. You're not wise. I love Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. It says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. You know, they, are, they, they talk, they, they talk arrogantly, pompously. Ah, some people did me bad some time ago. God says, say nothing, do nothing, just observe. Say nothing, do nothing. It's a fearful thing. When God takes off your matter, they will keep going down until they have the humility to acknowledge. For it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. The second scripture, Pop said this in 2 Corinthians 5, says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. God is not just to be loved, he is to be feared. It's like someone comes to me and says, Ah, Rev is love, I love Rev, Rev, Rev is nice. That's not, com that's not complete. It's not complete. I'm loving very long. Ah, nobody can love you like me. I, tell, I love you guys. But it's not complete. So someone say, God is God, it's not complete. It's not complete. These generation has songs about the love of God, few songs about the fear of God. I throw it to the to the psalmist, create songs about this fear. We, we need a balanced perspective of God to be healthy. Balanced. Balanced. Not emphasizing one over the other. Balanced. When you emphasize the love of God, that's what you get in America. You're supposed to have an American church. The kind of unruliness. So you know what happened in America? They just talk. God doesn't do anything. Very few places in those places where you see the power of God operating. Most of the things they do, the indebtedness. The churches in, the, in those cities, notions are yoked to the world. The churches, let me not get out of it. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. God is not just to be loved, he's to be feared. <laughs> Is to be feared. And to not fear him is to say we have not stepped in that school. What is fear of God? <laughs> God, let me just keep quiet. If you don't fear God, you are not wise, therefore. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Number two, what then is wisdom? Number two, the word of God is wisdom. Luke 11, verse 49. Therefore also said the wisdom of God. I will send them prophets and apostles and some of them they shall slay and persecute, them, persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of the generation from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zechariah we perish between the altar and the temple. What he was doing there is he was quoting the word of God. So in quoting the word of God he says so says therefore also said the wisdom of God. The same scripture is in Matthew 23, 34 to 36. Therefore said the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God is the word of God. That's why in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 15, it says, and from a child you have known the holy scriptures, 
it is able to make you wise unto salvation. So the word of God is wisdom and it has the capacity to make wise. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. The word of God is wisdom. What else is wisdom? Number three, Jesus Christ is wisdom. Jesus Christ is wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 1, 2, 3, but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. So Jesus is our wisdom from God. To understand wisdom, observe the life of Jesus Christ. Observe the pattern of his living. Observe how he related to his parents. Observe how he did the things he did. <laughs> Jesus Christ is wisdom from God. He's been made our wisdom, our sanctification, our righteousness, and our redemption. In Colossians 2, 2, he says, In Christ, that you have me be encouraged, being together in love, attaining to all the riches of love, uh, assurance of understanding, to the knowledge, acknowledge of the mystery of the God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom I hid, in whom I hid, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, in whom I hid, all. Oh, let me tell you. Oh, Rabbi Zuzia. Let's follow Christ. You may not miss anything, I'm telling you. <laughs> in whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> so the fear of the Lord is wisdom. The word of God is wisdom. Our Lord Jesus Christ is wisdom. So how then do you get wisdom this year? If wisdom is a master craftsman, a scepter for rulership, how do you get it? Number one, relate for wisdom. Proverbs 13, 20. He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. I think it was the message translation or the TPT, Hebrews translation, that says something go, let the righteous choose his friends carefully. 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 You, you, you association determines, you see, your wisdom, you associate for wisdom, really. I don't relate anyhow. You know, I'm just saying, I don't know. You don't need everybody. Do not join in gym because they need association. Foolish. Very foolish of you. You know the devil's go to gym? He said, I'm joining gym so I can have association. Foolish. You vet wisdom before you permit us. You vet wisdom. However, so you, 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 I, I vet, I observe, I, I really don't care for. And once I see foolishness, I withdraw. You relate for wisdom. Beyond men, because men have their issues. Three times Paul called God the only wise God. Romans 16, 27. To the God only wise. First Timothy 1 verse 17. The only wise God. Jude 1, 25. To the only wise God. Only wise God. Only. He, he, only wise God. So please, if he's the only wise God to be wise this year, Walk with him for it. Walk with God. Walk with the only wise God. Walk with God. I'm not talking about social media. I'm not talking about popular opinion. Walk with God to be wise. Relate for wisdom. Walk with the only wise God. You can't walk with the only wise God and not be wise. Number three, to get wisdom, Study the word of God for wisdom. I've mentioned that scripture before, 2 Timothy 3.15. He said, from childhood you have known the holy scriptures. It has the ability to make you wise. One day I said to my wife about some things. I said, babe, I've not read all these not since, but... <laughs> you know? Because the word of God will make you wise. Make you wise. Sometimes I'm there studying the word of God, and the word of God says, Okay, leave you this guy, go and do this to your wife now. Go and stay with your wife, go and do this. The word of God. Study the word of God for wisdom. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 2 and verse 16. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Study the word of God for wisdom. The measure of the word of God in you 
determines the measure of the wisdom at work in you. The measure of the word of God in you. You, as you accumulate the word, it becomes a robust basis for wise decision making. Now, Shiba, do it like this. Do it like this. Do it like that. The word begins to talk in you. And lastly, oh, okay, practice the word of God for wisdom. Relate to the wise for wisdom. Walk with the only wise God for wisdom. Study the word of God for wisdom this year. Practice the word of God. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to verse 28. Who so hears this saying of man and does them. I like him to be wise. Wisdom shows up in action, not in just confession. It's your action. Who so hears this saying of man and does them. Wise. I have no regard for those. I don't know what I do. I mean, I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to have to Practice the word of God for wisdom. He says it's going to be like a man who builds his house on a rock. Nothing can shake it. Because he heard from the word of God and he did it. Lastly, pray to God for wisdom. James 1 verse 5. If any man lacks it, let him ask of God, the one who gives liberally and who breeds not. You want to be wise? Simple. Relate to wise people for wisdom. Two, walk with the only wise God for wisdom. Three, study the word of God for wisdom. Four, practice the word of God for wisdom. And five, pray to God. He will give you liberally an operation. I believe that wisdom is an everlasting prayer point. I'm going to pray wisdom for the remaining 76 years of my life. I'm going to keep praying it until I see it operate. It's operating in measure. I'm going to keep praying it because sincerely, wisdom is a scepter by which kings, princes, judges, and nobles decree and reign in their realm. I pray this year 2023 will be your wisest year yet. And this year, God will spare you from foolishness in all of its shapes and sizes in the name of the Lord Jesus. And that this year, you are saying you grow in wisdom. And as you grow in wisdom, you grow in dominion in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for every leader, member, partner that this year will be your wisest year on earth yet. This year, wisdom will embrace it. It will promote you. It will honor you. It will exalt you. It will deliver to you a crown of glory, an ornament of grace onto your head. And that this year, you'll be far from foolishness in every one of its forms in the name of the Lord Jesus. And as you stay on this frequency, this year, you, you rise. In Jesus' mighty name. So the second scepter you must master. The scepter. Scepter of praise. Scepter of wisdom. These two things. Between charms. Taking more than I should have taken. Be blessed with the spirit of wisdom. Be blessed with the spirit of wisdom. <laughs> Be blessed with the spirit of wisdom. And this year will be your wisest year yet. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast with Reverend Deji Olabode. We believe you've been blessed by this message. Be a blessing to others by sharing it with someone. Worship with us at the Enthronement Assembly Headquarters, live at the SEPTA Convention Center, Plot 2, Latif Jakonde, Agadigi, Kedja, Lagos. The Excellence in Life Sunday service starts at 7.30 a.m. and the Celebration service commences 9.30 a.m. You can also join us for the midweek service at 5 p.m. on Thursdays at the same venue. For more inquiries, please visit djolabode.com or call plus 234-906-153-5283. Thank you for listening.